Well, hello everybody. It's wonderful to have you with us. I pray wherever you are that you know that God is with you exactly in the place where you are. Well, we are in this series called Walking Daily with God. And Walking Daily with God is about what God is doing within our life every day, just in the everyday of life. Well, yesterday in the Daily Devotional, I asked people if they would intercede for me, that they'd pray for me, because there's something I sense God wants me to do, and I need the Lord's wisdom, and I need the Lord's guidance, I need the Lord's provision in that. And to intercede, when when we intercede for someone, we stand in between them and God, and we hold them up to God, and we say, God, pour your attention Uh, I I put my prayer towards you blessing them. What I talked about yesterday was I very much feel stirred within my heart, within my spirit, that God is calling me to build community, but not just any sort of a community, but a proclamation community to to basically start a, a movement of communities, a movement of groups of people who meet together with this purpose to proclaim the gospel, to share the gospel with their children, their husbands, their families, their friends, those people they know. And to do that as a community of people that we're all connected to around the world as part of one group focused upon that amidst the other things that we do. Many years ago, when it seems like many years ago, when Rosemary and my five children, our five children were were small, Rosemary and I often pray to prayer, Lord, we pray that our children would have faith friends, that they would have friends, Lord God, that would encourage them, that they weren't just being having faith all by themselves, but they would have faith friends. And they would be able to see the parents of those children who themselves had a faith that was alive in them. Well, where we were living at the time, that didn't exist. And so Rosemary and I prayed and prayed, and then eventually it came to, but why don't we build a community like that? And in time, about 160 people would meet a couple of times a week. A big group of young people would meet. An older group of people of adults would meet. In time, over the years as that went on, four of our five children would meet their spouses there. Not only would they find friends that have lasted for years, four of them found their spouses there. It was an anointed moment. And it was all came out of this prayer, God, would you build community for our children? Well, I ascend, I, as I travel, I sense God saying to me, build an ecclesial community, a church community that people can belong to all over the world and be part of the one thing that's doing the one thing which is proclaiming me. There's a lot to that. And as I said yesterday, I'm not sure altogether how to do that just yet, but there are things we're talking about. But imagine if you were able to gather with a group of friends. Maybe you're someone who could just arrange to get together with a group of friends. We're going to give people all of the music so that they could have a time of prayer. We're going to get to get, give people the talks that they, uh, they could listen to and the notices they could listen to. Because Rosemary and I started up this, when we started this community, it started meeting a couple of times a week. Every Sunday, it would meet for an hour and a half. On a Sunday, people would go to Mass in their parishes and then it would gather. And, and maybe God would draw us to build something like that, but that people could do. Maybe in your house, you could sit and you could watch, have a group of friends over and together you could watch the message and build community. Maybe you'd be the kind of leader. Someone said to me the other day, I've got a real heart for Toronto in Canada. Maybe you could gather people to halls and auditoriums and you could win people to Jesus. And we're going to give you all the music and we're going to give you the talks and we're going to give you all the material to be able to do it. It's a big, giant plan and I need your intercession for it. But something I'm reminded of in prayer, that it's God who does it. Have a look at this in in Psalm 127 verses 1 and 2. It says this, Unless the Lord builds a house, those who build in uh, it labour in vain. Unless the Lord guards the city, the guard keeps watch in vain. It is vain that you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil, for he gives sleep to his beloved. Look at it again. Unless the Lord builds the house. Scott, would you just highlight the phrase, builds the house. Those who build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord guards the city. Highlight the word guards the city. 
the guard keeps watch in vain. It's vain that you rise up early and go late to rest. Right, highlight the phrase, uh, you rise up early uh, and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil, for he gives sleep to his beloved. It is a great passage of scripture. Now, it comes in the context of a group of Psalms which are about trusting in God. And essentially, we can read this at a surface level and we can get very close to what the meaning, the meaning of it is. Uh, and, and it says this, is there's this whole concept. When we think about building, we're thinking often we think about building a house. But sometimes in the scripture, when God calls us to build, he calls us to build a group of people. He calls us to build uh, something physical for him or to build a quality into our life and into the hearts of people. And we see repeated here in these couple of verses, some lines where it says, unless the Lord, unless the Lord what? Builds, unless the Lord guards, that these things, that it's the one who, God who's the one who builds, God is the one who sustains. Unless God does those things, it's all in vain. Why? Because the Lord is the one who builds. It is the Lord who ones who makes something grow. That unless the Lord is part of it, it's per- it, it lacks in purpose. Unless the Lord is part of what we're doing, what we're doing in some ways lacks worth. And then if we go on and we read and we read in verse uh, two, it says, "It's vain that you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil, for he gives sleep to his beloved." One of the things that we read through the scriptures constantly is this whole idea of trusting in the Lord. What we can do when we want something, we can become a workaholic. We can, or we can enter into worry about something, our effort. And we think if I work harder, if I run harder, if I do more, if I stay up later, if I get up earlier, if I work, I work, I work, that this will be successful. And what, and what, and what the psalmist is saying here is, no, trust in the Lord. Because when you're in a, in a tiz about things, when you're all worried about things, when you're all worked up about things, your eyes aren't upon the Lord, they're actually on you. And the person who trusts realizes that it's God who builds, it's God who guards, and it is God through his excessive grace that brings things to being. And if we are in him because we're living a life of prayerfulness and centeredness on God, His peace comes upon us and we don't need to be worried. doesn't mean we don't work hard, but we don't work frantically. We still might put in big effort, but we're not hassled. We're not frantic. We're trusting that Lord will provide. And maybe today when I hear God speaking to me and in my life and in the lives of so many who've spoken to me, and hear God saying, hey, build a community, build a movement that people can belong to for their children and for their families and for their friends in cities and in towns and villages around the world where people can participate and give them what they need to be able to, to lead and gather groups of people together. Uh, what God is saying to me, I sense, is I'm the one who's going to do that, not you, not you. So calm down. You don't need to worry. It, it's me who builds. It's my excess of grace, my excess of grace, my abundant grace that will bring this to pass. Why do I share all of that? Because I think there are many of us in our lives, whether it be for our children, for our work, for our circumstance, for our dreams and hopes, doesn't mean we don't work hard, but we have that trust, Lord, if this is your will, I'm trusting in you that you will bring it to pass. I think there are many of us in our lives, we can apply that in many, many different ways. Loving Father, as we walk more deeply with you, as we walk daily with you, allow us to encounter you right now. And Father, we make this prayer in Jesus' name, through the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you all, everybody. See you tomorrow. And don't forget, wherever you are, God's never, ever far from you.